Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for his church in the air, and then with his church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption. Welcome, everyone, to another LHB Last Days Update, Wolf Watch edition. And I'm here with uh, Pastor Bob Picard, God's Grace Bible Church. And um, let me ask you guys a question before we begin. Are you pregnant? Don't answer so quickly. Take a look at this video. Roll it. Candace Haynes here is a part of our community, integral part. Her and her family have been a part of Jesus Culture for a long time and had a really strong word from the Lord for our church and for those watching online. So we're going to have her pray into that and release it. Thank you, Becky. Yeah, there's, um, there's a scripture that my husband and I have been holding on to. And this morning as I was uh, watching people come in and I saw an exorbitant amount of pregnant couples and this scripture just came to my heart and it just burned like fire this morning in me. So I'm gonna read it to you first. Uh, this is Jeremiah is telling, or the Lord is telling Jeremiah to tell the captives, the exiles that have been taken into Babylon, they've been taken from Jerusalem and they are in captivity in Babylon. And the people are stuck. The people are just there, they're waiting, they don't know what's gonna happen. There are some false prophets that are even saying, you know, oh, just just wait, just hold on. In a couple of years, the Lord's gonna, Lord's gonna take you out. But the Israelites had 70 years that they were gonna be there. And the, but the Lord had a word for them. So this is what Jeremiah releases to the Israelites. He tells them, while they're in captivity, build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit. Take wives and have sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that you may bear sons and daughters, that you may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. This, this word right now, I feel like it's such a timely word for us where we're at. The Lord has not called us to be stuck. He has not called us to wait. He has called us to live as though we have another kingdom, another government that we are living from that has the final word. This, key, this world's kingdom, this world's government does not have the final word. And the Lord is saying, I have called my people to increase, not to diminish. They are called to increase. And as I saw all these pregnant people, I felt like the Lord was saying, even specifically for those that are pregnant in this season, He knows the uncertain times, but we must live as though we are not uncertain. Because that word, that, is, that was a word for the Israelites in the Old Testament. And you know why that promise is true today? You know why that word applies now? Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, that word is more true today than it has ever been even more so than when the Israelites were there. And so we can grab hold of that word now and we can move knowing that because of Jesus, he is calling his people to increase and not to diminish. We don't have to be afraid to build. We don't have to be afraid to plant. And I felt, I felt even for tonight and those even viewing online, I felt like there's two, two people that are two groups that we need to pray for. One specifically for those that are pregnant in the natural. You are going to be birthing a new generation. His people don't think in terms of a month. They don't think in terms of a year or five years. We think in terms of generations, right? And so the Lord is already, he's planting seeds where we are going to increase already right now for generations to come, right? And then I think there's another, uh, there's, there's another group that I felt like the Lord was speaking to me tonight. There are some of you that have been pregnant with destiny already. You are hearing, you are, oh, sorry, I thought I was going to fall. You have been dreaming and the Lord is birthing something. You are feeling that fire in your heart. But there, the times of uncertainty, 
the noises that are coming in. They have you in a place of, I don't know what we should do. What should we do? And, and it's leaving you kind of stuck in this place. And I felt like the Lord is saying, I am uh, right now, I want to birth you into movement right now. So I want to pray for those two people. One, if you are pregnant in this room or if you are pregnant online and you have people that are around you, um, just lay hands on those. So if you're pregnant in the physical, raise, raise your raise hand your if you're hand. pregnant right now. We got one right here, front and center. Okay, right there. Only one in the room? All Come right, on. let's gather around. Anyone else? Oh, you're going to get some, <laughs> some prayer tonight. Yeah. If you're online and you're pregnant, we're going to pray for you. And then what was the other group of people? The other group is if you if you feel like you the Lord has been dropping something in you. He's been dropping dreams. He's been dropping desires. He's been dropping ideas and thoughts. Things that you feel like you're getting pregnant with that destiny that's on your life. Would you raise your hand? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Would you, uh, church, brothers and sisters, gather around those that have their hands raised. Yes. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you. Those that are pregnant with destiny right now, I, I want you to lay hold of this faith, that when you make your plans, the Lord is faithful to direct your steps. And you don't have to worry about the next steps, but give those plans to the Lord. Make Him first. Bring your community around and move forward because the Lord will direct you. So Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the new births that are coming in the physical. We thank you for the physical prophetic word already of the new babies that are coming into existence into this generation, Lord, because your word over us is increased. Lord. All right, so we're back again with Pastor Bob. Uh, Bob, um, <laughs> are you pregnant? Is this your season how, to birth something? How, how, how you know, how can one, I can't even talk, you know, how can one respond in a serious n manner to something like this, but yet, you know, you can see these people are, are soaking it in like it's the greatest thing ever, you know, and uh, it all this reminded me of uh, uh, Stephen Furtick, you know, who gets it from T.D. Jakes, you know, T.D. Jakes, he, he, he used to look like he was pregnant. He might have birthed something, but I don't know what it was. Uh, but but uh, it's all this, the same thing, pregnant with destiny, pregnant with dreams. And and they go all through, go through a, uh, as we could see, they went through just totally uh, fabricating a story from, from uh, Jeremiah chapter 29. And they didn't go to I chapter. Wanted, they, I wanted to yeah. bring up chapter, uh, the, the verse she quoted because she left out the, the verse exactly. She just said Jeremiah. She didn't tell us the exact right, right. scriptures. So if you don't know, you're just going to take her word for it. And notice she stopped right before uh, verse 8. Now, I, it's Jeremiah chapter 29, for those who want to follow along, starting at verse 4, and we're going to read until verse 9. And we're going to see who the scripture uh, uh, is for, and, and, and Bob's going to go ahead and dissect this for us. But it says this, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Jesus culture. No, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. The God of Israel unto all that are carried away captive. Now, unless uh, Jesus culture was part of this captivity, then, uh, you know, I don't know what to say there. Whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. This is the verse she quoted here. She started here. Mm -hmm. Build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your, your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that you may be increased there, and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Now this is where she stopped, but we're going to continue a couple more verses. Verse 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets, this is kind of ironic here, let mm -hmm. not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, okay? Neither hearken to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed, for they prophesy falsely unto you in my name, 
I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Now, it's convenient how she left that part out, isn't it? Amen. Especially when the whole focus was on birthing dreams and, uh, and, and the like. You know, it's amazing. And with the background of all that is back in chapter 28, there was a, a prophet named Hananiah who people were listening to. And Jeremiah calls him, oh, he's a false prophet. And Jeremiah says, you're going to die. And what happened to Hananiah? He died just as the true prophet would say. And so chapter 29, you know, the most famous verse of all that people usually go to is verse 11, which I won't even quote right here, uh, yeah. is it's all about this letter that starting in verse one of chapter 29 that Jeremiah writes to those people in captivity. So this is a, a sub letter of, of Jeremiah's prophecy addressed specifically to them. And uh, the and another part about this video uh, that that we just watched is is they're taking that as Jesus speaking now to us. There's some great truths we can learn from this, but Jesus was speaking to who? Those that were in captivity in in Babylon, and they were they were the Jews that were in captivity, and uh, it, it's amazing. You see, did you notice one thing that it, it said that they were stuck? Ah, yes, yeah. they were. Stuck. This is a common. Uh, I didn't look. I didn't. I didn't do this. But if you were to go and do a search for stuck sermons, you would find a multitude of them because there's people all over. You know, what are you stuck in? You know, the people. The people here in Jeremiah 29, they were stuck. What are you stuck in? Are you stuck in a bad relationship? You know, since we, <laughs> we don't want to be called. We don't want to be called unfair. So we're going to give her a little bit of credit for saying that right. the scripture was real in the Old Testament. But, but. Uh, I don't because there's a but there. And then she says, right. we can apply that to us right. today. <laughs> yeah, there, there are many, uh, you know, truths that are that are that are in the scriptures that are for everybody, but it's not necessarily addressed to you. You know, they're they're to us, but not for us. We have the scriptures right. to learn from, but not everything. You know, I'm, that's why I'm not out building an ark today. It started raining earlier for a little while, and I don't have a compulsion to build an ark because it's not going to flood anymore. I don't have, have people, a compulsion. You have people that this, say, well, if, 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 if it's not for us, then why would God put that in his word? Well, like you said, we can learn, number one, about God's character. Amen. Right. You know, we can trust God. I mean, if you look at, at the, 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 the from the captivity, from the leading out of Egypt, I mean, all the way, as rebellious as the children of Israel were, uh, we focus on the children of Israel, but we kind of tend to forget about God's patience right? And faithfulness, even though they were unfaithful to him. I mean, we, we see his character, therefore we can trust the future promises relating to the church, the rapture, the, the millennium, all of that, Jesus right. setting up his kingdom. I mean, we can trust all of that because we look back and we see his faithfulness, right? Right. And this, it, it sounds like we might be going on a little, uh, into a little rabbit trail, but this goes against the people that say that, that the church has replaced Israel, you know, because they take those Old Testament things that happen in the book of Genesis and Exodus, they say those are literal, but yet the future, those are, those are figurative. They're allegories. So you have to change it to the church. But what, what these charismatic, uh, I, I don't I I don't want to broad brush stroke all of charismatics, but this real uh, wacky fringe does is they just take a broad brush and they just say, let's apply everything for us, and that's that's what happens in this case, and you know, well, and it's nothing new though. It's not really a rabbit trail because it does apply to what she was doing. True, exactly. She was applying it to the church, and when I say the church. I don't believe these individuals are saved in any way, shape, or form. I, I you know, I believe these are the uh, Second Corinthians eleven uh, individuals Paul was warning about uh, right. ministers of unrighteousness transforming themselves into ministers of righteousness, and um, you, you could you could tell because uh, it was in Matthew seven. Jesus said, "We will know these false prophets. We will know them. It's not like we won't know them. We don't have to guess. Uh, you know, we we hear them. We see what they're doing with God's word." They're acting as if God doesn't know how to communicate with us. You know, like he doesn't say what he means and means what he says. So they have to help him out. I mean, obviously, right. we got to go through our own desert, uh, our own uh, Red Sea, you know, our <laughs> right. own Pharaoh, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, 
I just I just kicked over a Jericho a little earlier, you know, by by accident though. But you know, hey, that's what happens. <laughs> it got in the way. <laughs> <laughs> because you make it your own ten plagues. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's it, no, it's it's crazy. You know, I I shared that video with you before. I you know because it was it was pretty interesting. You know, and I, I even like the, at the beginning, the, this she's talking about how she sees this multitude of pregnant people, you know, coming into church. Then after she asks, how many, how many people are pregnant? <laughs> and there was one. I'm like, what? I thought you, I thought you were reminded because you saw a whole bunch of pregnant people coming into church. I'm like, but what is going gonna- on? <laughs> that one pregnant lady is going to birth a nation. <laughs> a whole nation is going to come from her. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, but again, if you go back and if you were to look at T.D. Jakes, he, he says this terminology quite often. And, and his uh, number one protege, Stephen Furtick, same thing. You know, you have something inside of you that's waiting to be birthed. Or uh, Stephen Furtick, remember, he had another number one protege who is, uh, he, he knows the truth now. Um, Bishop Eddie Long. <laughs> oh yeah, Eddie Long. Yep. Yeah. They used to be doing the same thing, talking about birthing this right. and birthing that. You know. Well, I don't. I don't know what Eddie birthed, but you know, I wouldn't want to be him. <laughs> you know, uh, I tell you what. I remember. Um, a vi- I, did, I did a video of him um, years ago when that rabbi, a quote unquote rabbi, uh, Ralph uh, Mesner, whatever his name is. I think. I hope I'm saying it right. Well, they wrapped them. They wrapped them in the Torah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they wrapped the whole thing around they, them. Yeah. They were up on a throne, and they were yeah. carrying around, parading around with a crown on his head. And I'm like, this is like the height of blasphemy. Like, yeah. it's called this guy Jesus Christ is what you're doing. Right. Well, you'd be better off to have a Rabbi Ralph Cramden. You know, would <laughs> would work out better. Someday <laughs> <laughs> to the moon, Alice. <laughs> they won't know who Ralph Cramden is, but they need to look him up. Google Ralph Cramden. Oh, yeah. Get <laughs> yeah, yeah, more truth than the honeymooners. Like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey. But, yeah, some of that comedy wouldn't fly today because, uh, you know, cancel culture and all of that, you know. Oh. Uh, we, we're, we're living in a weak, weak generation, uh, you know, of uh, weak people. It's... Bad. Even in the church, uh, you know, they're caving into this nonsense. But that's another, another, yeah. uh, I know, you know, but, um, yeah. Uh, so yes, you went on to say that, you know, this, we're, we're all going to be pregnant, birthing a generation and birthing, uh, your, what did you, what did you say? Birthing your purpose and all of this other nonsense. Purpose, dreams. Yep. Dream, right, right. And she got this from Jeremiah 29. How do you get, right. how do you read Jeremiah 29? What we just read, how do you read that literally? And then say, this is for your purpose. Yeah, well, you have to open up to the book of imaginations, you know, chapter number three and and then verse number one. You know, that's the only place you can get it. Or I, I always, I've always been a fan of Monty Python and Holy Grail when they pull out the book of armaments. <laughs> You've seen that, right? Let's consult the book of armaments, chapter five, for the holy hand grenade. That's equally as valid. <laughs> You will be reading a Marvel uh, comic book. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Superman said, <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm sorry, that yeah. was DC. I, I just committed blasphemy. <laughs> yeah, Mar- yeah, don't get Marvel and DC mixed up. Uh, yeah, you know? we can't do that. that, that yeah, that's, yeah, you don't do that, brother. <laughs> Else they'll rain kryptonite on you. <laughs> I know, right? It's, it's like uh, uh, the Bible uh, is kryptonite to these uh, false teachers because uh, they... they they like to use it and twist it. I mean, and, and, and look, Satan did that to Jesus, you know, during the temptation in the wilderness. He, he quoted scripture back to Jesus, and he, the scripture he quoted was true, but it was taken out of context to hey. get Jesus to sin. <laughs> I, I have an answer for, uh, for, uh, for Satan there. If you go to Revelation 19, and let me find the exact verse I want to get to. Uh, uh, Revelation 21. There we go. All right, 21. Yeah. Verse 10 says, okay. he, carried, yeah. he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy yeah. Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, 
having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. And then comes the description of this wonderful uh, New Jerusalem uh, coming down. And very so I, I just that just brings me back to the temptation uh, of Christ by by Satan offering him this puny, you know, city. And then here we have the millennium and then the new Jerusalem. Checkmate God. Is that checkmate God. And, you know, in the yeah. temptation of the wilderness, a lot of people don't. I just realized it right now that the N.A.R., the word of faith crowd, the N.A.R., they are actually bowing down to that temptation. Right, they exactly. Want this world that was offered to right. Jesus by Satan, and that's what they're taking and they're using it. Well, that brings us full circle to where we began with this prayer uh, from from uh, Jesus Culture Sacramento, the emphasis on you and your power and you taking over the kingdoms of this world, and uh, and it, it bypasses. You know, one, one thing dangerous that the whole movement does is it bypasses the fall. You never hear about the, the fall of Adam and the sin coming into the whole world. You find all about your purpose and yeah. how God wants to, wants to give you your purpose and, and you can overcome these things and you can be, uh, you can usher in the kingdom. And that's, that's the tragedy of it. It gives, gives so, us godlike ability rather they, than God. They, they so. bypass uh, the fall and like guys like Copeland uh, made this really popular. Uh, he says, what the cross did, what Jesus did, was to actually bring us back to our pre-fall condition, right. our, and we got our godhood back, right? right? Now we are little gods, and we, you know, it's funny because all these guys, they've been teaching that, you know, they're going to live to 120, and they can yeah. things to existence, and yet every single year they're getting older. Right. They're wearing glasses like you and I. There's no difference. Right. Yeah, it and uh, you know, I wonder if anybody would ever want to take uh, like a, a pool on an over under on on how uh, if Kenneth Copeland is going to make the hundred and twenty years. I mean, I'll, I'll take the under. I don't think he's going to make it. Well, <laughs> I, I, I do think. Uh, unfortunately, I think he's going to make the hundred twenty years and beyond, just not on this earth. No, oh, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I hate to say that, but I look, look. Some people, you know, they say, well, you got to, you know, pray for these individuals and God could change them. He could change their heart. Yes, God could change your heart. Definitely. But they have willing, willing to change. Right. God doesn't uh, uh, force anybody to, to love him or accept his son or accept the gospel. He doesn't force his will on anybody like that. Right. And matter of fact, everybody in hell is there because of their own will, not because That's of God's right. will. They no. rejected the gift of, of God. You know, Jesus yeah. Christ paid for the sins of the world. All you have to do is receive that. And, right. uh, you know, people have rejected it. it so, and, and to think that Kenneth Copeland hasn't heard the true gospel, that would be just naive. That, that would be just pure ignorance if you think that. The man has been reached out to by members of the LHP family. Uh, uh, right. Anthony Todd has reached out to his ministry numerous times, and they right. just give him the runaround, the runaround. They don't want to hear it. They, they yeah. have closed their ears to anybody that, that's poo-pooing their prosperity little God's teaching. Right, because they bow down to the God of this world and they think they're on the same level as that as those gods. So or as that God rather. So we wanted uh to, to show you guys um uh, the, the 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 teachings that are out there right now. I mean it's like the Hydra of Greek mythology, man. You cut off one head and you know three more sprout up and it seems like every year um, the, the apostasy is getting wider and, and spreading like cancer. And what's amazing about cancer, uh, cancer, yes, it destroys the body, but in, in the process, it kills itself. And uh, this is what the human race has become. We, ha we are the cancers of the universe. We are rebellious uh, by our fallen nature, and we're rebelling against God, and we think that we could fix the problem that we caused, and it's impossible. And so, uh, 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 Brother Bob, um, you know, just for people that may be stuck in this kind of, they don't know about uh, uh, the Bible or Jesus or anything, but they're, they're, they've heard this for the first time. They're, they saw this video of Jesus culture, and they thought that was Christianity. Um, explain to them the gospel and, and why uh, they need Jesus Christ. 
Well, uh, those of you, you did see this video, and one of the things that that uh, that was shown by these false teachers or prophets or whatever you want to call them uh, with Jesus culture, this one woman said the problem with the the Israelites and the problem with us is that we're stuck. They have they have a uh, a meaning behind stuck. Their meaning is that you're stuck in something uh, in this in this earthly realm. You're stuck in a bad relationship or stuck with bad finances or all these things. But let me tell you this: uh, the human the human race is stuck. You know where it's stuck? It's stuck being sold under sin, and every single person has is a sinner. Why? Because our Great, 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 great grandfather or father, Adam, he fell and sin came into the entire world. We're stuck in that, you know, and uh, we have the effects of it physically. Uh, just look at me. I used to have brown hair, you know, uh, you know, we're getting old and wrinkly and, and falling apart. And that's that's the entire entire world. Every person is in that position. And because of that, that is because of the, the, the nature of sin that's been handed down to us. But the good news is that one can become unstuck. You say, how can you do that? Well, you do that by trusting that Jesus Christ came. He came in the form of, of man, but he was fully God and man at the same time. And him being perfect, he died your death. Yes, you deserve death because of your sin. But Jesus Christ came, took upon himself the cross. He, he received it freely and he died for you and for me. And what do you need to do? You don't have to go to any place. You don't have to jump through any hoops. You don't have to say any prayers. You just have to receive the gift that's been given to you through Jesus Christ. Yes, he died for you and he has something for you. And that is his righteousness, which is received as a gift. Now, how do you receive a gift? Go ahead, tell me. It's given to you and you accept that gift, the free gift of salvation. Jesus Christ was died, was buried, and he rose again in, in fulfillment of the scriptures. And that becomes a, the gift of salvation for you and for me, for all that believe. That's the simple truth. It doesn't get more simple than that. And uh, that's the hope that we have. So if you're stuck in sin, like everybody else is, just accept the gift of salvation. It's like being stuck in the mud. If your car is stuck in the mud, and somebody says, look, I have a tow chain. What do you do? You accept that tow chain. Jesus Christ is that tow chain that rescues you from that mud of sin. Boy. Amen. Amen that, brother. You know, uh, a gift uh, has to be paid for. Uh, that's right. The gift is the one that pays for the gift, the receiver. Mm -hmm. receives it. And it's a beautiful thing uh, when the way you explain that, because a lot of people don't understand what the gospel really is. And when you you know you break it down like that, they they see the the bigger picture. Wow, this is what Jesus did. I mean, you and I were former Roman, Roman Catholics, and uh, I, I was in that church. I, I I didn't understand the gospel ever. Did I? I just no. knew that Jesus Christ, you know, he died. Why? What was the purpose? You know, uh, why did nobody he... told you? No one told me, man. I was so, and that so it's it's a blessing to to be able to hear uh, preachers actually break it down because that that's the beauty of the gospel, man. I mean, you're 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 born in sin by no fault of your own, as Brother Bob said. It was our first father Adam that did this. So we, you know, it's kind of like a a tree. If the roots of a tree is in poisonous water. Let's say it's, it's feeding off some poisonous water. The fruits on that tree will automatically be poisonous. That's right. Because it's sucking up from the mm -hmm. water. It's going to go into those fruits. And you and I are the fruits of Adam and Eve. We just came right. out of that. <laughs> Amen. Well, here's another thing that on that same line. It's Lee. Let's see. Uh, uh, 
a dog is born a what? I'm not going to go into Cleflo Dollar or whatever. And a, a cat is born a what? A cat, right? Uh, a giraffe is born a giraffe, right? Uh -huh, yeah. A sinner is born a sinner. Sinner, yeah. And, you know, there's no way that a giraffe can become something else or a cow something else. It's always going to be that. But yet the sinner can be changed. I'm laughing at this because Bob knows why I'm laughing at this. Oh, you know why you're laughing. He knows this video clip very well. Yep. Dollars is, a dog produces what? A cat produces a, what? And so a God produces what? <laughs> so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now that's interesting because if everything produces after its own kind, we now see God producing man. And if God now produces man, and everything produces after its own kind, if horses get together, they produce what? And if dogs get together, they produce what? If cats get together, they produce what? But if the Godhead gets together and say, let us make man, then what are they producing? They're producing gods. <laughs> I, I, I went through a little bit of that this past Sunday about uh, what little what the what gods mean, where Jesus uh, quoted from from uh, Psalm 82, you know, simply means judges or rulers, you know. <laughs> Elohim, a multitude of judges or rulers. I'll tell you what, uh, I'll never forget this. Uh, Dave Hunt years ago uh, said, um, when, when God and Satan, they both called us little uh, gods. They said, we are now gods to know good and evil, right? But it's not a good thing. Basically, no. we have become the gods over our own lives. Uh, we're literally wanting to run the ship. And that's basically, if you want to look at it that way, that's true. We, we want to know good and evil. We want to be able, you know, and the thing is, only God can handle good and evil. We can't handle evil. He just wanted us That's to know good. <laughs> you yeah. know, evil is seductive. It has a way of, of uh, just bringing you down further into it. Yeah, the, the old notion that I used to hear is you're the captain of your own soul. So, well, if I'm the captain, we're, we're going to be like the Titanic. So... <laughs> I'm glad I have a shepherd and bishop of my soul uh, rather than the captain. <laughs> I, I, was like, I don't trust myself. <laughs> no. You know, I don't trust this. As long as I'm in this, this, this carcass that we're carrying yeah. around, this thing that wow. we're waiting to be changed one day. This is our enemy, by the way. This thing right. is our enemy. And it, it, it gravitates yeah. to things that we just got to pull it back from every single day. So, right. When I hear people say, "Oh, being a Christian, that means you're a wimp. You're, you're, you're it's easy to lean on a crutch." No, it's not easy, man. No, no, definitely. <laughs> no. And as much as that that decrepit flesh keeps on trying to trying to get you to uh, get you to go by it, uh, our tendency is to feed it, even though it's dead and stinking and rotten. We need to yeah. to feed uh, our inner man, you know, as as believers. And another, there's another whole whole uh topic right there is, is we got uh, we, we got to do this again man because we yeah. haven't done videos in a while together but we have some uh, stuff coming up and i can't believe it's almost 2022 and i think we we're gonna have a bible prophecy conference coming up i believe in what march what, what was it march yeah right yeah coming there. up already we're gonna be uh getting that together and i know the ladies have something planned as well um so yeah a lot of a lot of things god willing that we'll get to hopefully though we don't get to it because the trumpet blows tonight. That's and right. Have Any second. <laughs> yep. I don't have to. I don't have to listen too closely because it'll be heard quite audibly. So. Oh you're, yeah, we're gonna know. We're gonna. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Wait, time out. I need to walk the dog real quick now. That's gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Go up leash first or dog first. I don't know. You know. <laughs> right, you know. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining us. And by the way, um, uh, before we go, uh, Bob, uh, tell them where your church is located and how to find you. 
Okay, well, that uh, good thing for GPS and be able to look in the search engines and everything, but uh, we're at God's Grace Bible Church. We're in Millbury, Massachusetts, and uh, and uh, we're here. If anybody's ever in, in New England, uh, come on by. Uh, just uh, we, we're pretty simple, you know, nothing fancy, no no dream destinies or anything. We just open up the Bible and, and teach it uh, in context and, and go from book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and as, as God designed it, you know, to be, to be read and to be studied as well. So, so we're, you know, at godsgracebc.org is the, the website. So, uh, and take it away, Chris. My dog was saying amen. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> guess what, guys? They teach plain old Bible. I mean, uh, if I was there, I would be part of that church. I'm not. I'm, I'm in Florida, so <laughs> we're, we're we have the great apostle Ma, uh, Maldonado. What is his name? Maldonado. And oh, we have Maldonado. Yeah. Yeah, we have the church by the glades. Uh, <laughs> we have some really good, solid churches down here. Yeah, not, I haven't. I haven't checked in the Church of the Glades in a while, but you know, I I can't imagine nothing's changed. Yeah. You know, I think they're doing the latest MTV Music Awards on the church. I don't know. <laughs> they get I, sick. I, he came out in a Cadillac or something on stage. I'm like, oh, that's what oh, he's doing. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I know it's it's crazy, but you know, people uh, bring the kids. <laughs> yeah, people love it. We're gonna feed you to the alligators down there and. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for joining us. We love you guys. And, you know, um, again, uh, listen to what Bob said about the gospel. This, you know, all these programs, you know, they have great teaching in them. We have great topics. But above all of that is we want people saved. We want to see you guys in heaven with us. Listen, it's a lie that the devil has made that says God is boring. Heaven's going to be boring. Have you seen the promises that God has in store for those that love? Mm -hmm. Bor boring is not even in the in the same universe. Right. Think about a God that doesn't run out of ideas. Right. Think about even, that. <laughs> even in this earthly realm, it's not boring. It's 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 incredible. Ah. You know, we uh, actually to have life and not have to not have to have a hangover the next day to have the, this reassurance of life that you have. It's incredible. So guys, just you know, please um, don't don't sleep on this. Don't procrastinate. Uh, if you if, if if the Lord's been tugging at your heart, which I know He has, because He does that to every human being, He wants all men to be saved. Okay, so you you know what we're saying. If you're feeling convicted of wrongdoing, don't go away from it. That's a good thing. If you're feeling that conviction, all of us do. All right, it's to let you know something is wrong. And uh, the gospel points you in the one who can cure that, okay? And clear your conscience. Uh, it doesn't mean you're not going to you know, sin anymore. You're still going to sin, but not at the extent you used to. And by the way, those sins would have been paid for, okay? That's the purpose. Amen. But um, okay, guys, we love you. God bless. And until next time, my friends, look up. Our redemption draws near. Draws Amen. <laughs>